Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. I just finished evaluating the new Aspire version 9 and I can't tell you how excited I am about some of the new features. In fact, most of these features I think stand alone would justify the upgrade. Let's take a look at what's new. When you first open Aspire, it pretty much looks the same, but once we go to the create a job step, then all of a sudden uh, things change. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to say create a file and you're going to notice something different. There's some more stuff on here. For instance, at the top under job setup, it says double sided or single sided. So that's a key that there's something new about this, but we're going to get into that just a little bit later. And then some of these other settings down here have, have, have been added. Okay, let's close that. Now on the actual user interface, the first thing you'll see is a toolbar that stretches all the way across the top. And it just makes it convenient. So, you know, your layer commands up here so you can look at your layers. Now, there's some new things here. Toggle geometry snapping on and off. So you can turn that on and off. And the geometry snapping is hugely improved. For instance, let me give you an idea here. If we go back over here to edit uh, snap options, you see there's lots more snap options now than there were. And you'll see how that works out. But basically, all this makes it easier to draw and it makes it much more like a traditional CAD system and it probably cuts my drawing time in half at the end of the day. There's also a thing up here called, called uh, Smart Snaps and it basically extends lines and stuff to, to make the snapping function much, much more powerful. And of course over here we have our view. We have view extents and those kinds of things. So now that's basically the changes in the interface and we'll see some other changes as we dig into the software a little bit. Probably the feature to me that, that saves me the most time is how they've changed the drawing part. And let's take a look at that. So here's a piece of material. First, let's start with a line. Now, normally we would just do a line like that and that, all right? And then hopefully we got the right sizes. But there's a faster way to do that now. I can actually come over here, start a line, and now at the keyboard, just type a number in and it locks it in. And you see then that becomes the next point. And if you notice, see all the snap lines coming in? There's actually a there's actually a snap line at the center, midpoint of the material. So they, they've made a lot of drawing aids in here that are much, much better. So let's type in four, and we just keep going around. Let's go up here. Let's go to five, and we'll go to two. So it's real easy to input dimensions as, as you go along. So that makes a lot of drawing easier. Plus, there's a lot more inferences, and there's a whole lot more snap points. So I think the ability to do real accurate stuff is, is going to be much, much better. Here's a feature I, I like also. Let's say we start a line here, and I start a line. Now, you'll see it constrained to 90 degrees, so it tells me that that is a 90-degree line. So I didn't really have to go to any other steps to do that. Basically, I click where I want to click, bring it around, and, and that constraint, that 90-degree line constraint that you typically see in solid models is there. So it really, really helps you put your sketches together. I think that's a big aid. That's something we've really needed in Aspire for a long time. Uh, something that was a more, more CAD-like, more like solid modeling functions and drawing, and they did a great job putting this in. Now, there's a couple other things I really like, too. Let's say, for instance, I need to draw a circle. Well, normally I would have done this and then typed a dimension in. But they've given you a feature now that's pretty neat where you can type the circle. Now, what I'm doing is I'm clicking where I want the point to be, the center point. I'm holding the, the mouse button down, and I type in whatever diameter. Let's say first I want three deep, three inch diameter. Okay, let's do another one. This time I want a three inch radius. So it makes that kind of stuff much, much simpler. Now, there's another drawing function called tangent lines that uh, we've needed for a long time also. Now, if you've ever tried to do this, you could, you could accomplish it, but you kind of had to jump through some circles. Now, watch this. Let's zoom into here. What I want to do is create a line that's tangent to this arc and this arc. Let's do that. So I'm going to start with a line, and I'm going to get close to this arc over here. Now, when I get close to this one, I'm going to hit T. In fact, I don't even have to be that close. I'm going to hit T, and it creates that. So that's a huge, huge. Now, by definition, here's what tangency means. When a line is tangent to an arc, it touches at one and only one point. If it doesn't touch at any points, it doesn't touch the line. And if it touches at two points, it's not tangent. Also, if you draw a line from the center of the circle, so let's see if we can do that. If we go, draw a line from the center point, so let's see if I can pick the center. There it is. 
that will be a 90 degree angle. So by definition, a tangent line is 90 degrees from a line to the, to the center of the circle. So that little feature is really, really nice. We'll do another one over here. And, when you, and so you basically just get close to the circle. And over here, when I hit T, when it's close and I hit T, it's going to make it. So that's, whoops, I actually did a, I think I did too many clicks. Let's do one more. So oh, approximate where you want to start. Come over here close. Hit T. And then when you hit the right, there you go. And then we can take the scissors, clean those out. Now that's a really nice piece of tangent geometry, and it was so fast. Like I say, to me personally, just the drawing function changes here would, would validate uh, upgrading to the newest version. I think that's that powerful. You know, something that really goes along with drawing is dimensioning, and, and the dimensioning function I think is, is really nice. Let's take a look at that. I've drawn a simple shape on here. We go over here to the dimension icon, and it brings this screen up. And let's see, let's do a horizontal dimension. And, and of course, the snaps are in place, so I'll say I want a dimension from here to here. And there's a the dimension. Same thing, let's do a vertical dimension. Let's go from here to here. Once again, all those drawing constraints are, are active also. Uh, if we want to do a, an arc dimension, we basically pick the arc and we can put box wherever we want. So they've made that really, really powerful. You can actually put notes on here. So let's say I want to put some text on here and I want to do it horizontally. So I could come up here and just say, now this would actually be a note, but right now it's going to say router bob. So whatever I type in this box is what you get. And all the dimensions that you create are put on a layer called dimension, so you can turn that on and off. So it's really nice. So there's the dimension layer. I turn that on and off. So they, they've done a really good job of, of managing that. And once again, that's part of the whole improved CAD function I take in the software that's, that's, that's really, really good. Now I want to talk about 3D because I think the changes they've made in version 9 for 3D are huge. Well, let's take a look at that. You know, Aspire has always been really, really good at what we call 3D relief. That's acanthus leaves cut down on the surface, clip art, those kinds of things. But when you got into taking a true solid model and tool path, it, it, it needed some more features. Well, this new version 9 really has dealt with that. Now, what you see on the screen here is actually a solid model that we created, and it's a, it's a neck for an man, electric mandolin is what it is. So that's a true solid model. and. Uh, Let's see if we can tool path that in, in Aspire 9. The first step for Aspire is actually to determine the stock size. So the way I did it was I calculated the bounding box and then made the stock larger. So it turned out that the piece I'm going to make this neck out of is three and a half inches wide, 18 inches long, and, and an inch and a quarter thick. So that's what you see here. Now, here's something that's different. We're actually going to cut both sides. So you see some more stuff pops up here. All right, now I can actually touch tools off to different sides independently. So on one side I can touch off to, to the top. I prefer the machine bed is Z0, so that's pretty much where I'd rather touch off to. Now here's another setup here that's different, and that is flip direction between sides. So basically you can either flip the part this way or end to end. In our case we're going to flip it like that because of the nature of the part. So I hit OK, and let's take a look at this. Now, once I'm at this screen, what I want to do is bring the model in, and let me show you how you do that. You go to the Modeling tab right here, and you come over to here, and you open your file. All right, there's the 3D model. Now, what we need to do is get it aligned with the material, so it looks like it's going to have to rotate, and I'll probably tell it to center it. And then the other thing I'm going to do is actually position it vertically, and I think .75 works out pretty good for that. You have to be careful because uh, if you have undercuts, the, you can't reach those from the, uh, the opposite side, so I want to make sure that I can get to all of this. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now the model is in our software. That's what it looks like. And you notice there's some extra buttons up here. For one here, I can actually come up here and look at the other side. So that toggle. So there's one side and there's the other side. So that's part of all this two-side machining, bringing the, the part in and, and actually orienting it that way. So that's pretty good. Okay, so what's our next step? Well, basically what, we got, what we're going to do is bring in a couple more uh, DXF drawings. For one, I have to create uh, holes to rotate and locate, so I need that on a drawing. 
and I'll also need to uh, probably there's actually some they're called peg holes that go in this and I th those are actually a, a 2d drawing that we overlay on there so let me get those loaded and we'll be right back you know a lot of times when you're machining 3d part there's also some 2d machining it could be pockets it could be holes and and normally that's just driven by 2d geometry so what I did in this application was I just put that on a layer and it's turned off right now we'll turn it back on and it's on a layer called DXF and you see here's you see two holes in the corners all right now here's what those are for we're actually going to machine those holes put pins in it when we flip the whole blank over those pins fit in at holes in the table that we've also machined real precisely and that's what makes the front and back line up so it's really critical and then the other holes you see are for the pegs so that's what those are there, there's four they call them peg holes all right so now let's uh, let's go ahead and toolpath this so the first thing I do is is let's do a 3d toolpath I'm going to use a quarter inch straight bit and primarily because a straight bit's more aggressive than a, a ball nose and uh, all I'm doing is making roughing pass you have to decide what the boundary of your tool pathing is going to be now I can't just say machine everything away that you don't need because when I flip this it has to rest on the surface so I've, I've gone with select vectors and I'm going to pick this line that's a whoops that's a vector well if I can get it there that's the vector and I've, I've, I've set the boundary outside of that so that lets the tool go all the way down and we'll hit calculate and we'll see what we get okay so there's our first tool path right there all right let's see what happens here let's let's uh, let's reset all those let's see what we get preview now you see how it steps down in layers and so it's kind of terraced its way down in the in there's there's about 40 thousandths of material outside of the finished surface all right so that looks pretty good and then let's do the same thing uh, on the finish pass we open that up same same process make sure we have the outline selected it's still selected we hit calculate and we generate that tool path And that should give us our finishing tool pass. So we hit preview, and there's that. Okay, now, while we're on this side, why don't we go ahead and machine our holes because we need to do that, and that'll kind of help us keep things in order. So our DXF's on. So what I'm gonna do next is, uh, I'm actually gonna machine those holes. So I think what I'll do first is select the profile cut. I'm gonna cut all the way through the material. I'm gonna select that hole and that hole first. I'm going to use a quarter inch bit cutting on the inside so that should be pretty good and we're going to call those pins so we'll calculate those it's just telling me it's cutting through it's normal and we'll simulate that so now that gives us also so we really don't have to machine that deep if we didn't want to but it doesn't hurt okay and then let's go back and let's take that same tool path and make a copy of it and then let's open it up okay this time we'll deselect we'll select these holes and we're going to call those pegs everything else stays the same we'll call those pegs and we'll calculate that and to tell you the truth in reality I would probably put the peg holes or find the pin holes I'd probably do that first so let's put that on the top of the list so let's reset our preview and we'll preview all tool paths let's see what happens there we go okay that looks that looks very very good alright so we're finished with that side now let's flip it over to the other side so we'll hit this and we're basically going to repeat it okay make sure that we have our outline selected so let's go we'll pick that whoops one more okay we'll go with a rough pass just like we did before the setting should should be the same we'll calculate that and we'll preview it okay there's that and then we'll also come over and do the finish pass and make sure we're still selected yep we'll calculate that now we're getting the tool path for the other the uh, finish pass on it and we'll preview that and that's what it's going to look like now let's reset our preview 
This time let's say preview all tool paths and let's preview all sides. Once again, as I said earlier, I did not put tabs on here because I want to be able to get rid of this waste and show you what the finished part looks like. Now, isn't that magic? So I basically was able to take these new features in Aspire and actually uh, machine a true 3D solid. So I just think that's an unbelievable, powerful tool for Aspire. I wanted to do this video to highlight some of the neat new features in Aspire 9. Uh, in fact, I would upgrade personally just to have the new drawing functions because it saves so much time. But I think now the ability to actually handle 3D solids efficiently is huge. And uh, I certainly applaud the work that our friends over at Vetric have done in being able to put this together. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaver.com. Thank you for watching.